Hi and welcome to another tasting video. Today I'm gonna taste two wines, a cake frankosh and a lamberger. Or you may also know this grape variety as Blau Frankish because these three names are actually relating to one grape variety, a very Central European, Eastern European variety. Cake Frankosch is the Hungarian name and Lemberger is the German name. And actually on the left hand side I have a Wenninger wine and this guy has vineyards on both sides of the border, also in Austria and also in Hungary, because in Austria the typical name is Blau Frankish. And this uh, wine is actually coming from the Steiner vineyard, from the Hungarian side. And Lemberger is coming from uh, Württemberg, from, from around Stetten. And it's also a GG wine, so if you want to call it a Grand Cru wine. And these two wines have actually a lot of things in common. So both of them are made from organic grapes. Wenninger is also by dynamic uh, winemaker or wine wizard, how I like to call them. Uh, both of them are 2016 vintage, so the same grape variety as I explained, and also unfied, 13.5% uh, alcohol, spontaneous fermentation, uh, both of them seen some barrel aging, so really they should be somewhat similar and reflect this great uh, Blau Frankish tasting profile, because both of them, in my eyes, they are really top class in producing excellent Blau Frankish Cake Frankosch Lembergers. So I just want to taste them again because we yesterday opened the wines and I have a general idea about these wines already, but let's taste them again and maybe we get to know more. Oh, and actually if you want to know more about these terroirs, uh, Mr. Wenninger uh, also uh, has put up a great video about his terroirs, so where he explains it with maps, and so on, I'm gonna put a link above. And if you want to know more about these terroirs in great detail and also maybe listen to a cool podcast, I also did a podcast with Moritz Heidler. This is actually, so from the Karl Heidler winery. He is actually the grandson of Karl Heidler. Really fun, really a motivated young winemaker. And I'm gonna do another podcast with Franz, uh, or Franz Wenninger uh, today and tonight. So. It's also gonna be uploaded. I'm gonna put the link uh, also at the end of the video. But now let's taste. I already, I'm really thirsty, so let's do it. So I already have the first wine in my glass. So Stettener Mönchberg Berge GG, uh, Lemberger from the Karl Heidler Winery, trocken, so dry. So it's already from the color, it's really vibrant and elegant, have kind of, yeah, foxiness to it from the color. So it's more like a bricky kind of, uh, reflex and the nose is really like a slight dirtiness to it or dustiness. You can feel the oxidative uh, wine making methodology and uh, also some a bit closed maybe at first but no noticeable oak note so really just the present aeration can be felt and no pepperiness, more like this really acidic red fruit aromas come to my mind. So really this cranberry, sour cherry and this kind of notes, but let's taste it. Mm. Yeah, the wine is really attacks your mouth first, but really elegantly, so to say, or like a gentleman. So it shows its acidity, it shows its uh, power and edges. It dominates, but it has an a body, so really full body, not just a linear, uh, easy drinking wine. Light licorice notes also. Maybe some bee leafy notes, now I get in the nose. So it's medium plus or maybe even higher acidity. And really firm tannins, velvety, but I can still feel it. So it's very, it's, it's present, but slight, drying out my palate but not aggressively so really well integrated and the acidity is really well lived but very ripe no green sensation all over this is very ripe wine and very ripe grapes for fermented for sure like barely over like black cherry what comes to my mind actually when I swallowed it so like this juicy really juicy wine and maybe some hip tea aromas in the aftertaste 
and some cranberry or this kind of fruit and really the length is like at least 30 40 seconds or 50 it's even evolving but really more like a typical Württemberger wine in my eyes because this guy uh, also produces excellent Rieslings actually and it's really typical to his wines and also to this region in the Rams Valley that the wines are also acidic but also fruity so really generous and have some side of in case of Riesling some minerality or this really like a pleasant sensation but makes you want to drink another sip and this wine has like a really pleasant dirtiness to it and earthiness but not this deepy but like a fresh mushroomy kind of smell and taste really nice could be aged for sure mm. because it also has enough acidity it's uh, 40 years old the wine and really fresh really alive a lot of extraction you can feel it's a dense wine but not overwhelming i think it's on spot so let's taste the other one so already the second wine the Schoproni cake from Kosh, from Benninger so Schoproni is the wine region in hungary it's actually on the western border bordering austria and steiner is the vineyard it's historically one of the best vineyard in the area so we opened these wines yesterday and i had a general impression about these wines already but the proof is in the pudding so let's try them again so the Lamberger actually was more on the like really dominated by this ripe red fruit and also the color is maybe a bit more on the purple side so maybe a bit more vibrant uh, but let's try them again so yeah the nose is really more on the black fruity side so in case of the cake from course so I get more maybe this juniper berries and blacker and then uh, maybe on the slightly on the more plumier side or maybe barely overripe black cherry but i also get more spice so maybe this cumin or black pepper notes uh, or also this earthiness but maybe more deeper flavors and yeah maybe a faint like desiccated red meat or this kind of very very animating uh, spiciness and earthiness comes through as well yeah and wow it's really ripe tannins as well maybe a slightly more dry more drying sensation but really ripe tannins so very mm, cake franco has this ability to have present tannins but really velvety but still present it's a very elegant wine i think and both of these wines have it and um, it's maybe a bit less acidity as well in case of this wine and the acidity is long so it's but it's well integrated so it really has a it's dancing in my mouth it's like this wine is enjoys showing its many faces it's, it's really alive also lo low sulfur wines unfiltered unfined really really this wine is alive and has so many flavors and depth I, I can really encourage you to just open a bottle and enjoy how this wine develops with the oxygen with the temperature it's really a wine where, where you can philosophize next to it you know and actually that's what we did yesterday so hmm really beautiful elegant wine so maybe just the conclusion about these two wines i think both of them are typically well-made old world wines so really central european or eastern european a really exciting nose uh, long-lived aromas developing typical blau frankish so both of them have these characteristics a little bit of elevated acidity and not so aggressive tannins but have these slightly acidic fruit characters but uh, really well made ripe tannins it's also a late ripening variety so you can get a lot of aroma development as well and not overwhelmed by oak any of them and really i think both of them are really age-versy they have the acidity they have the extraction so 
I can really recommend you this wine. It's very versatile also in the kitchen. I actually gonna do some beef stew later, but also with some tomato tomato based dishes, so like bolognese or or any tomato sauce mainly. So I really encourage you to buy these wines and also listen to the podcast because uh, both of these wine research has a lot to say also about biodynamic winemaking and also about the great terroirs and they really respect this grape variety and both of them are really world class in making these. So thanks for watching the video and prost egészségedre!